Hey guys, welcome back and thanks for tuning in. You know what? I promised last Sunday that this Sunday's video was going to be all about Black Knights, but some things happened. And I know we've told you in previous videos about the issues with power and now water in both Texas and Louisiana. And here in Lake Charles, we have power. As you can see, we still don't have water. And the water that we do have is a boil advisory. So unfortunately, I haven't been able to shower. I'm still taking those crazy old West baths. So my hair is all messed up. I still haven't been able to shave. And more importantly, from the gecko's perspective, we haven't been able to do anything other than spot cleaning in all of our racks. So tubs are a little dirty right now. And I didn't want to do a full video on Black Knights and let you see that. So you got me today. And today, I'm not Big G. I'm Professor G. That's why I have this corduroy jacket on. Messy hair, not shaved. I'm actually missing a button, just like a professor wrinkled shirt underneath, and my teaching assistant. Where's my teaching? Poppy, come here. Every professor needs a teacher's assistant. And this is Miss Poppy Dog. She got her new shirt on today. It's donuts. So as Professor G and TA Miss Poppy Dog, today's lesson is about mathematics and leopard gecko genetics. And I haven't talked about this before, but prior to being afflicted by the gecko addiction, I earned a bachelor's degree in accounting from West Virginia University. And I also spent 20 plus years in the casino industry. And the thing that I learned in all of that time is that the number one most trustworthy thing in life is math and that's today's subject math and genetics are you ready i promise it won't be boring but you do have to pay attention so get a drink get comfortable settle in listen to the intro and let school begin check the mic and make sure it sound right boys All right, you comfortable? You ready? So what are genetics? Genetics are probabilities. So each parent we know has two alleles of each gene. Each parent contributes one of the two alleles. Those two alleles come together in the offspring and create a phenotype. Well, that's what we're going to talk about. It's easy. You know how to do it. But what's probability have to do with it? What's math have to do with it? It's all about math. Think about this. What a probability is, is how we quantify the likelihood that something will occur. Exactly what we wanna learn with leopard gecko genetics. If I pair gecko one to gecko two, what is the likelihood in the offspring that I'll get what I want? So that's why we're talking about math. Think about it more simplistically. Let's think about it with a coin. And I have a toonie here for my Canadian friends. That's a $2 coin for my American friends. So what is the probability or the likelihood that when I flip this coin, I will get a head or I will get a tail? It's 50-50, everybody knows right? However, what's the probability or likelihood that if I flip two in a row, I'll get two heads or three or four or five? Do you know how to calculate that? That's what we're going to talk about today, how we calculate that. It's called the product rule. This 
is the product rule. J, write this down. So when we're talking about mathematical probabilities, there are two different scenarios. There is the theoretical probability, which is the mathematical equation, which tells us based on independent events, what should occur or what outcome should occur. And then there's the empirical outcome, which is what actually happens in real life. So if I were to flip this coin, one time, two times, three times, five times, 10 times, I should be 50-50 based on theoretical probabilities. However, empirically speaking, I probably wouldn't flip five heads and five tails. It would probably be a variation. However, there's another theory. It's called the theory of large numbers. What the theory of large numbers says is the more events that occur, empirical and theoretical converge. So if I were to flip this coin 100 times, I'd be a lot closer to 50-50, or 1,000 times, I'd be darn close to 50-50. That's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna talk about probabilities, we're gonna talk about math, and we're gonna talk about Punnett squares. So how about we go to the virtual chalkboard over here and let Professor G show you today's lesson. Before we dive into the virtual chalkboard, quick disclaimer. As previously stated, I'm an accountant and casino executive, not a geneticist. As a result, I take liberties with the use of capital and lowercase letters when representing alleles. I'm well aware that the proper way to display dominant traits is with a capital letter and recessive traits with a lowercase letter. However, for simplicity purposes, and as long as you know which traits are dominant versus recessive, I find that the additional letters such as a capital N for normal is unnecessarily complex. Now that that's out of the way, let's go. Okay. Welcome to the virtual chalkboard. We all remember Punnett squares. We learned about them in grade school when we had to figure out how to do the genetics of a pea plant. Well, that's not what we're talking about today. What we're gonna talk about today is we're gonna talk about leopard gecko genetics, Punnett squares, and mathematical probabilities and how they all relate. So let's start with the leopard gecko, a simple example. Let's say we have parent one, and parent one is a Tremper albino. Visual Tremper albino, which means it's homozygous Tremper albino. And we know that Tremper albino is a recessive trait. In order for an animal to visually display a recessive trait, it has to have two copies of the gene. And we will represent that as big T, big T. Parent two, on the other hand, is 100% het, or heterozygous Tremper albino, which means they only carry one copy of the Tremper albino gene. So we'll represent that with a big T and a little t. Now let's do our classic Punnett square. We all know what these look like. So parent one has two copies of the big T. Parent two has a big T and a little t. When we combine them in their offspring, we get two big T's, two big T's, big T, little t, big T, little t. Pretty simple, right? So what's it mean? Well, the two big T's mean that we created visual Tremper albinos with this pairing. In this instance, there are two offspring with big T's. So two out of four, or 50%. And the other possible outcome was the big T and the little t. In this instance, two out of four, or 50%. Not surprising, we all knew that probably. 
didn't even have to go through the Punnett square to be able to figure that one out. We can also do it without a Punnett square, like we talked about in the flipping of the coin example. We can use the product rule. And we know in the product rule, and in this example of leopard gecko genetics, parent one is going to pass either this T or this T, which means there's a 100% chance that parent one is going to pass the Tremper albino trait to the offspring. Parent two, there's one big T and one little T. They can only pass one of those, which just like the coin flip example means there is a 50% chance or probability that parent two will pass on the big T. So we can take parent one, which was 100%, times parent two, which was 50%, 50% times 100% equals 50%. We come up with the same answer that we came up with here. Makes sense. However, no real advantage to using the product rule when we're talking about a single simple gene. Let's imagine a two gene scenario or a dihybrid example. We'll write that up here. Two gene slash dihybrid. Now we can still do this. Let's just go back to parent one. It is a Tremper albino visual, but also a visual eclipse. And we know, just like the Tremper albino example, that eclipse is also recessive. And we'll represent that as big T, big T for the two copies of the Tremper albino. And big E, big E for the two copies necessary to visually display the eclipse. Parent two is still 100% het. Tremper and also now 100% het eclipse. And we'll represent that the same way we did with Tremper. We'll go big T, little t, big E, little e. So now what? We're going to do a Punnett square? I guess so. Although this time, It's a lot bigger. It's 16 positions. So parent one is up here, just like before. Big T, big T, big E, big E. Parent two is over here. Big T, little t, big E, little e. And we have to write out all these combinations on this Punnett square. This is where Punnett squares start to get complicated. So the only thing that parent one can transfer is a big E and a big T, because that happens to be the only genetics that parent one carries. Parent two can transfer a big T and a big E, or a big T and a little e, or a little t and a big E, or a little t and a little e. Now if we start mapping this all out, we got big T, big T, big E, big E, all the way across here. Whew, starting to make my wrist hurt. So big T, two big T's on this row, and now a big E, and a little e. And that's going to be the same thing all the way across, as you can see. Whoops, that's supposed to be a big E, 
little e. Now in this row, we're going to have one big T, one little t, and two big E's. Like big E smalls. Big E, big E, big E, big E. I digress. Final row of combinations. Again, the big T is going to come down from parent 1, the little t from parent 2, and a big E and a little e. So what would that give us? This top row up here is all big T, big T, big E, big E, all four of them. That means that we produced visual Tremper albino eclipses. So there are four out of 16 possibilities of that, which is 25%. Two big T's, a big E, and a little e. We produced Tremper albinos that are 100% head eclipse four out of 16 times, or 25%. Next combination is a big T, a little t, and two big E's four out of 16 times. Again, 25%. What that represents, the big T and the little t, means that that offspring is 100% het tremper albino, the two biggies mean that that offspring is a visual eclipse. So this is an eclipse, het, tremper. Let's go back up to the other one. This is a tremper, het, eclipse. And this is a visual tremper eclipse. What's left? Big T, little t, big E, little e. 4 out of 16 times. Again, 25%. What did we produce? We produced 100% het tremper eclipse. Not visual. Make sense? Complicated, right? Still workable, but complicated. What if we would have did this using the product rule? I'll show you a shortcut. Okay, so the exact same example, right? Parent one is a tremper eclipse. And we displayed that previously as two big T's and two big E's. Parent two, just like the previous example with the Punnett squares, is 100% het. Tremper and Eclipse. And we displayed that with a big T, a little t, a big E, and a little e. How can we use the product rule to keep us from doing a 16 square Punnett or a 16 box Punnett square? Simple. We cheat. Let's break the genetics into two halves. We're going to use our TTs, the two big T's, the two big E's, big T, little t, big E, little e, and we're going to use our old-fashioned, simple Punnett squares. And imagine this was two separate animals instead of one animal with two separate genetics. So parent one has two big T's, parent two has a big T and a little t. Over here, parent one has two big E's, parent two has a big E and a little e. Well, just like before, we can do our simple four square punnets or four box punnet squares. And what did that give us? Well, over here, it gave us 50%, oops, 
50% big T, big T, and 50% big T, little t. And over here, it gave us 50% big E, little e, and 50, oh, 50% 50 big E, big E, and 50% big E, little e. Well, that's a lot easier to manage. Well, how do we use the product rule? What we were trying to figure out, any of the combinations before, but let's try to assume that we want to know the percentage of this two gene combination. What is the percentage or the probability that we are going to create a Tremper albino visual, so TT, and an eclipse visual? So a Tremper albino visual eclipse. What do we do? Well, here's visual eclipse. It's 50%. Here's visual tremper, it's 50%. As we showed you with the product rule, we simply multiply these. 50% times 50% is 25%. Exact same answer that we got on the 16 box Punnett square. A lot simpler to do to get to the exact same answer. You following? Seems pretty simple, right? If we want to do three or more genes, do you want to do punnets? Do you know what that entails? For each gene, here's the number of squares or boxes you would need in your Punnett square. Single gene, pretty simple. It's four. We already did it. Two genes, doable, but starts to get a bit cumbersome. Cumbersome. Sixteen. Manageable. What about three genes? Uh-oh. We need 64 boxes on our square. Four, 256, are you kidding me? How about five? You don't even wanna know. 1,024. Good luck. After you draw that one, will you please send it to me? I'd like to see it. And also time yourself. I'd like to know how long it takes. We're gonna cheat. We're going to use the product rule, and we're going to do a three genetic combination. So product rule again, for three genes. Just like before, parent one is a visual homozygous, tremper, eclipse, uh-oh, here we go. Also a white and yellow. Parent two is still 100% het tremper and 100% het eclipse. Not white and yellow. Not sure what happened to my W there. Got away from me. So how are we going to represent this? Let's do big T, big T, big E, big E. And white and yellow, unlike the Tremper albino and the Eclipse, which are both recessive, white and yellow is dominant, so you only technically need one copy. So a big W and a little W. This animal, just like before, is a big T, a little T, a big E, a little E, two little W's, because it's non-white and yellow. Re remember now, white and yellow is dominant. You can't be heterozygous or het for a dominant trait. You're either going to display the trait or you don't have the trait. Well, let's cheat. Simple 
four box punnets. There's Tremper, there's Eclipse, and there's our white and yellow. Parent one has two big T's, parent two big T little t. Parent one, two big E's, parent two, big E, little e. Parent one has a big Y and a little y. It's an ugly Y. That's better. And parent two is two little Y's. Okay. So two big T's, two big T's, just like before. Big T, oops, big T, little t, big T, little t, big E. Biggie, 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 biggie. Uh, biggie, little e, biggie, little e. All right, this is a little bit tricky. I made my box a smidge small. So big Y, little y, big Y, little y. Messed that up. These are both little y's. Little y, little y. Big y, little y. And then little y, little y. So what did we end up with here? Remember, what we're trying to find is a big Y, a little Y, two big E's, and two big T's, because we want to know the probability of producing a Tremper albino white and yellow. So right here, the two big T's, it's two out of four, it's these two, 50%. The big E's, again, two out of four, 50%. The big Y, little y, is right here and right here, again, 50%. So what do we do? 50%. 50%, 50%, times 50%, times 50% equals, do you know? 12.5%. We have a 12.5% probability of creating a Tremper albino, white and yellow, in this three gene combination scenario. A lot easier to figure that out than it was to do a 64 box Punnett square. So there you go. There's today's lesson. Jay, you better have been paying attention or I'm going to send you to the principal's office again. I know you're used to that. Hopefully it wasn't too confusing, and if you have any questions, make sure you reach out and ask. We'll be sure to help you. It's all about math. Remember, it's the only thing in life that you can absolutely trust 100%. So as always, I hope you enjoyed this video, and don't forget, lunageckos.shop for our merch. And if you like this video, please like it, please comment, be sure to share it, and above all, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you do subscribe, make sure you ring that bell, because every Sunday, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, Luna Geckos, new video. And during the week, we've been dropping bonus content. So if you hit that bell, you won't miss it. We love ya. I'm G. We're Luna Geckos. See ya. It sound right, boy.